Today I want to show you how to read the ROM from a dead motherboard. This is a 820-4924 MacBook Pro Retina 13 inch and the board as you can see is, is one of these $25 boards from China where all the important chips have been yanked off and it even has a huge hole drilled through the middle. But the ROM chip is still there and we would like to actually read it. Uh, one way would be to solder it from the motherboard and place it in a special socket and connect the socket to your ROM reader and read it that way. Um, or you attach, you solder it off and you attach eight wires to it. But here we're going to try to read it with our brand new CMI Zappa Medusa. Um, in many cases to read ROM chips off motherboards you have to power the ROM chip so just in case we will have to do that I soldered the wire to the PP3V3 that underscore sus uh, which you can find there but with a little bit of luck we're not going to need it. The Medusa plugs into the little connector here Loads of people call it a JTAG connector, but it doesn't actually have JTAG on it. The Medusa um, comes attached with a cable, and at the end of the cable we use the red adapter board in this case, to fit the small plug over there. And the adapter board plugs in with the arrow towards the back of the Mac. So we carefully plug it in. Oh. And I don't know if you can see, but the Medusa is already reading all sorts of stuff from the motherboard. So it looks like it's actually working. Let me zoom in to show you better what it is reading. So it's going to show all the data it can extract from the ROM. This is the ROM chip it sees in the motherboard. Internal parameter. The serial number of the Mac, that's quite miraculous. Some more internal stuff. The production date of this motherboard, so it's pretty young. It shows that it's not locked. Firmware version 12.1, MacBook 12.1. ME version 10.0 for the management engine. The QE bit is set in the status registers of the chip and that's all the data. It goes around the second time. Now let's also see if we can actually read the ROM from the Mac and copy it into the Medusa ROM. We do this by moving switch 4 up. Oops, there we go. Now it's going to read the ROM or at least try to read the ROM from the Mac and copy it to the ROM in the Medusa. First it's erasing the ROM in the Medusa. This takes a little while so I'll fast forward it for you so it will not be too boring. Well it's almost done erasing. And now it's copying so you can see it's actually managing to read the ROM uh, in a proper and reliable fashion and copy it into the Medusa ROM. The erasing of the Medusa ROM chip takes about a minute and copying the ROM takes about another minute. On the bottom right of the screen of the Medusa it is showing a small extract of the data that it's copying. Okay, so now the ROM has been copied into a ROM hiding inside the Medusa, under there somewhere. And we can actually read that ROM into our normal EEPROM programmer. Let me show you how you connect it. 
And as you see, we did all this without the Mac board being powered or the ROM chip being powered actually. Our little yellow wire is dangling out to nowhere. Let me show you how you would connect it to an EEPROM programmer. First we disconnect it from the board, we remove our little red adapter, we actually disconnect the USB power and we plug the cable into the auxiliary ports on the Medusa, which is there, and we plug it into our little DIL adapter, Oop. which will just fit like a little DIL chip into your regular zero insertion force socket of any old programmer, and this is how you would use it. Um, without the Medusa being fired up and the settings would be irrelevant. Thank you for watching this little demonstration of the CMI Zapper Medusa, a very practical tool for reading and writing Macintosh ROMs.